Hiya fishy folks and welcome back to Michael's Fish Room. Today a subscriber fish room tour. Well, not so much fish room but more like a closet and a few other tanks with a plethora of fish species in it. Grab yourself a healthy snack and a beverage. Today of course I have my coldest water cup. Ah, ice cold water. And oh, I gotta show you these. This isn't healthy. But this is my new favorite go-to salty snack. These Lay's layers, sour cream and onion. Look at the, the shape. They're like, they're like potato puffs with sour cream and onion flavor. I know, not healthy, even though onions are vegetables, so partially healthy we'll go with, but so good. Anyway, grab yourself your own snack and beverage. Let me know down in the comments below what said snack and said beverages, and enjoy this tour. Hiya fishy folks, welcome to my fish room. My name is Josh and I'm from the woodlands here in Houston, Texas. To start off, I want to show you guys my beautiful males that I've been breeding for the past year. Now these are half black red delta tail guppies. I got these from PetSmart last year. All of the guppies in this room were spawned from one female about two generations ago. As you can tell, this is the color that I've been trying to shoot for. And there's a few variations, but I think I'm getting a lot of what I'd really like for very cheap fish. Just took a lot of special time and effort to get these guys to come out. Moving down, we have the females of the same stock. Now these are sisters and mothers of those you just saw. Let's see if I can't get some better lighting here show you these females and then the babies on the other side of course some more mystery snails up here is where I'm breeding the mystery snails and boy are there a lot of baby guppies I've been spending lots of time culling these and pulling the colors I don't want And I've hardly been getting any fish deaths. Ever since recently, I've been keeping fish without live plants. And then about last year, I kind of really got into it and bought a bunch of plants. And these fish have been doing so much healthier. These live plants make all the difference for your fish. I hardly get any deaths these days. To the left here, I've got uh, some more Dalmatian mollies, but these are babies born just last week. I'm just keeping them safe from the turbulent 33 gallon that they were in. This here is just an extra plastic fish bowl that I've got plants growing in. Um, just extra stuff. Yeah, this is my setup. Just three 10 gallons for these guppies. And of course, I'm feeding them baby brine shrimp every day, right here. Now, this is pretty neat and easy setup anyone can do. I recommend getting at least a quarter inch outlet there because it can take a while to drain this through just the airline tubing. I was wasting a lot of time draining the brine shrimp and just upgraded those outlets and voila, much quicker. So maybe that's a little tip you might be able to use. Um, but this brine shrimp just, it helps with the immunity of the guppies. They grow real fast. And as you can tell, their colors are just stunning. I mean, look at that. Whoa. <laughs> just amazing little fish. Isn't that cool? Spectacular. They look a little hungry, don't they? You guys want to see them eat some brine shrimp? All right, I got the brine shrimp drained out here. Right out of the bottle. It took less than 30 seconds. 
This here is how I rinse the brine shrimp with a little bottle like this into this uh, stainless steel sieve. I just give it a nice wash and just make sure the hardness in the water isn't changing a whole lot. I know it doesn't matter so much for the live bears, but I do my best to keep the parameters as consistent as possible. And I just use a little pipette. Suck up some of the brine shrimps. I'll be feeding this to all my fish later. And uh, let's see if we can get it to focus here a little bit. Yeah. There they go, they love it. It is their favorite. Let's give some to the babies down below. Hey guys. The top view is pretty cool. I enjoy watching these guys. Yeah! They just go nuts! So for the breeding of these mystery snails, I try to keep at least an inch of air on the top of the tank here. If you can see, they've got their snail egg casings. They take about a month to six weeks to hatch. And those snails fall down here and turn into these guys. So in this tank, we've got some water sprite put on some wood there. And here is Amazon frog bit. Now this stuff grows super fast, is exactly what you want for your guppies or any kind of breeding project where you've got fish kind of overstocked. This and a light on pretty much 12 hours a day that takes care of the nitrate problem for me. I'm confident I wouldn't have to do water changes on these tanks for close to two months with all this Amazon frog bit in here. And this here is Pogostimens stellatus octopus. I got it from Aquarium Co-op and it sure grows fast, but it seems to collect lots of algae and things. Um, but that's all right. I'm not too concerned with that there. This here is the 50 gallon community tank. Full of silver tip tetras, red Urian rainbow fish, and there's a big pleco in here too. I've got some Anubias growing on the background and on the rocks and wood, and this is cryptochorine green on the ground. Lots of different plantlets. There's a few oddball fish in here, like these white cloud minnows. They came with the tetras. So yeah, here's the 50 gallon. I've also got a rainbow shark in here. She likes to hide all the time. I wanted to show you all the different fish I've got in this tank. Just keep these guys well fed and they'll keep their aggression down. Just beautiful little thing. I think it's about half size. Had her for eight months now. Underneath the rock, we've got two black tip tetras. They just hide out under there all the time. There's the other one. And as you can see, I've got a 400 gallon per hour power head right there, pushing along the back of the tank. 
and another 480 gallon per hour power head going up and pushing the water up front. So it just circulates around. And this power head to the left is connected to the light timer, so it's only on half of the time. So this is the 10 gallon mutt guppy tank. This has about 40 guppies in here. And it's planted with Anubias, more cryptochorine, there's some java moss in there, and then I think this is um, java fern windetti. These mystery snails are really pretty. They eat all the dead poop and stuff. Keep the tank really clean. All of these guppies will be going outside in the pond this summer. Some real pretty colors in these. Now these lava rocks I just glued together with some cyanoacrylate Gorilla Glue. It's non-toxic and it's really useful for getting these kinds of structures and arches and whatnot. This here is a four gallon glass fish bowl. I've got a few mutt guppies in here that I just particularly liked, a few snails. These guys are a lot of fun to watch. I started this bowl with com completely inert substrate to try and reduce any kind of algae growth, but you can see there's some on the rocks I've been having to control. And here's my 33 gallon long, four foot Dalmatian molly tank. Let's zoom in here. It's so long, these guys are in like a little river setup. And uh, they are liar tail Dalmatians. So about half of them have that cool extension going on. This is one of my most favorite tanks. I certainly spent the most time scaping this, spent the most money on it, with all the plants and wood and whatnot. But yeah, they're breeding nicely in here. Again, this is only Dalmatian Molly, so they've got the whole range of themselves. Thinking about adding some loaches, possibly. but there are a bunch of them. And I just keep pulling babies out all the time. Just wonderful fish. I think these are probably the smartest fish that I'm keeping as well. Kind of act like dogs, swim around in a pack. And here we've got more java fern on the top. We've got cryptochorines growing in between this wood and the gravel, and then some jungle valicinaria. It's the first time I've used that, and it is gorgeous. If you ever want that grassy look in your tank, valicinaria. And this just has one power head on this left side. I really like the side view on this long tank. These fish have so much swimming room. 
They just love it. Here we are in the studio. This is a five gallon marine land portrait tank. And we've got a full of glowfish. There's nine of them in here. They had babies. And just some fake plants under this blue light here. This tank is really nice. There's tons of room to put sponges in the back of the filter. Um, the water circulates from right up here. A tiny little pump brings it down and around and then of course sucks back in through that intake. Again, completely inert substrate here, just trying to reduce any kind of toxic outbreaks for my fish. Yeah, these are the glowfish. It's a nice little five gallon tank. Here we are outside in the hundred gallon pond for my turtle Midnight. She's an albino red-eared slider. Take the net off. This helps keep some leaves out, but the pond's dirty because of the trees have been dropping pollen and leaves and everything. But this cleans up real nice in the summer because of the Amazon frog bit. You guessed it. Now Midnight, she really likes to eat the Amazon frog bit. It's part of her green diet. And I also feed her these koi pellets. She likes those and I try to make them hit the ring. Right in there. Yeah, it's just a beautiful day out here in the pond. I can show you the pump. There's a power head and a pump here, 800 gallons per hour. And that just runs along into this five gallon bucket. And this has some lava rock and sponge filter media. And then it comes out here and into this reservoir. This is like 40 gallons. So I'm estimating the total water volumes about 100 gallons here. And then of course sucks right back here and it makes that funny noise. And aerates the water going back to midnight. She is five years old. Let's see if I can't grab her. And uh, the reason I can tell she's a girl is because her front nails aren't very long. The male um, red-eared slider males have really long front nails. But yeah, she's gorgeous. She's a lot of fun. She eats raw shrimp as well and algae wafers. And this is her first year outside in the Texas sun. I want to say thanks to Michael's Fish Room and thank you all for watching. Take care. <coughs> Hi, you fishy folks, and welcome back to Michael's Fish Room. Today, a real treat a subscriber fish room tour that's small but really nice. No. Fishy folks, and welcome back to Michael's Fish Room. Today, a subscriber fish room tour. Not really a fish room, more like a closet and some tanks, but I tell you what, it's pretty cool to watch, and he's got some nice guppies as well as a variety of other fish. Grab yourself your coldest water cup, which I left upstairs. Hiya, fishy folks, and welcome back to Michael's Fish Room. Today, a subscriber fish room tour. Well, not not so much a fish room, but sort of like a closet and some tanks. It's a great tour. Uh, this guy has really nice guppies that he's breeding, as well as a plethora of other fish species in his other tanks. Grab yourself a healthy snack and a beverage. I keep looking over here, but I'm not grabbing, so that's dumb because I'm an idiot. 
fishy folks and welcome back to Michael's Fish Room. Today, a subscriber fish room tour. Brain fart. <laughs> 